this is how each kit looks inside Ableton. Inside our Live 10 suite, this is the suite version, and the layout is the same for intro standard as well. The top level is a drum rack so you, with the name of the voice of the kit. So for instance, on the 808, there are 16 voices. CR78, 16 voices and 13 voices on the Elka. And the key things, kicks and stands are always in the same place. The default, when you open each instrument up, is effects unit one, effects variation one. Um, that is the Hawk, the stereo uh, Hawk H half 45 spring. So if you arm your channel, which is already armed, the 808 here, and hit C3 or A, which is kick, A on your keyboard, kick one, that's what you hear. You hear the first variation, that, that is the 808 that we recorded at Soundgas in the UK. I've got a lovely in-house 808. That is the 808 kick, sample through the Carrot console at Soundgas, going into the stereo hawk, and the hawk is set at 25%. And then that's recorded back through two of my 1073 Neve preamps. But if you change the variation to two, something comes alive, you get more attack on the front of that. 50%. 75%. So longer decay. Longer still. 100%. And you hear with the the setting of the machine, how it slightly moves in stereo image towards the end of the so the sustain. And it's the same for all the samples, but by changing the, the macro here, the effects variation. You quickly change the sample you're accessing, which makes it super dynamic for when you're programming or for playing. You can automate, of course, automate the variation. There's so much capability and possibilities with this. That's a real, that's a real spring reverb. And the Hawk is a really, really nice example. Effects Unit 2. Works in the same way. That's the Pioneer 202W that was made for a hi-fi. Uh, was that 70s, 80s maybe? I actually don't know. Um, it's darker, the stereo image isn't as wide. But it has so much character, it's great on vocals, amazing on vocals. <laughs> That's been playing it on my keyboard. Gets really interesting when we get to the echo. The there are two echo units on here, analog again. The slightly different characteristics. One is the space echo, so as in three, and then four, which is the second uh, echo, is the Evans echo pair, which is BBD. Each four have different settings for which are specific to the machine. Um, intensity, repeat rate, uh, this, they're different on both machines. So the four variations, rather than being 25 to 100% of just the one, um, instead of being one setting on the repeat rate and intensity rate, there are four different versions. And by just clicking the macro, it gets interesting again for, this is, again, the, the Evans is kind of darker. The Evans is amazing when you're running a full loop through it. By the way, it's very cool. All that kind of trash mic on the kit. There we go. Five and six are the really fun ones <laughs> when it gets crazy very quickly. Distortion. That's an 808 going through the PA, Roland PA80, which is a PA mixer, and attenuation, the input gain is just absolutely cranked. Ah, oh, I love it. Yeah, I know, totally not suitable for everything, of course. But if you want something different for your weights, then we've got you covered. If you wanted to know what a test can put Studio 414 sounds like when you put an 808 through it and distort the crap out of it, 
This is, <laughs> this is it. Here we go. Four stages again of input gain going in and out, actually back into the new preamps. Toasty and clipped right at, at four there. Some of Andrew Marshall's loops are amazing with the 808. There we have the effects units, one, all the way through, and they're controllable, super easy, using the macros. It gets, it's really fun as well when you assign it to like a controller like this, for instance, if you can see that. Uh, this is the Novaging Launch Control XL. I just mapped the different devices here. It's the first pot. I'm just controlling the effects unit, so I can do the same. I can do it manually. I can uh, automate it as well, which is where it gets really interesting, the use of like a live performance, and then again, the variation. So I'm going to play, let's go to, yeah, we're on kit one, and we'll go to variation. In fact, I'll just use, on my right hand, I'll use the Launch Control XL to cycle, let control the macros. And on my left hand, I'll just play the keyboard for some sounds. So I can change, let's set the effects uh, unit itself and the variation. That's so nice. Now, I could also filter that sound. I could add spring on spring, which is not desirable, I guess. But very cool when you add it to the distortion. And then the internal echo. <laughs> which is just not, it's not the default. I mess with it. It's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, you, of course, you can go into the effects where I can do what you want with that as well. Now, distortion on distortion, it's going to get crazy. But it's amazing. A lot of Andrew Marshall's loops have got this going on, and they're so sick. Whoa, wild. So straight away you'll see that just by using the effects and the macros that you can cycle through. You can you create really interesting new sounds and ideas from the samples, which I think are interesting on their own anyway. Because I guess that's the whole point. Create something interesting. Rather than just giving you a whole set of one shots and loops of machines that you kind of know and get them anywhere, that's kind of boring. Uh, this hopefully isn't boring. This is accessible and creates uh, something at least that's interesting for you straight away as soon as you open the session and start playing. Uh, the same, all this, all the stuff we've been going through there applies to the CR78 and the Elka as well. Just to be in line. Snare 2 actually is really good on the Elka. Cowbells also kill it. <laughs> Never was much of a keyboard drummer. I could put the real drums up. So there you are. That's kind of a, a very quick overview of how the instruments look, how the session looks when you open it up, and how the macros really are like the foundation of what makes this thing interesting. At least I think it's interesting. And hopefully what will be useful for you if you're in the studio, if you're programming, or if you're using this live whenever we get to playing live again. So yeah, enjoy it.